What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Secret Wars, Avengers 5. It's high on the priority list for the MCU. Why, Brian? It's the cash cow in terms of box office success for any studio, Brian. They bend the bar as to how to do this because nobody's ever taken that chance, Brian. What's it called from the last crusades? The holy grail for you to follow somewhat. Some people have taken it overboard, Sony, to get to that success, Brian. And we haven't gotten one of these Avengers films for quite some time, Brian. Uh, what is the latest on Secret Wars, Avengers 5, and all the characters that they are looking to introduce? And what what we think of, what we think about this, Brian? Because I don't, I, I don't see it. I don't know how they make it dope. Because when I think about this, they do this. Is it for the future or is it for a sort of Illuminati sort of type uh, introduction, right? See, I'm one, this is whatever happens and then that's it. I don't want that, Brian. Your thoughts? So we finally did have some news on the Avengers front, specifically the Avengers 5 front. And it's funny, Pablo, your lead was Secret Wars because I kind of feel like in some ways, the fact that they're trying to prep two Avengers movies versus just the one as they were back in 2012 is almost hamstringing them a little bit because it feels like to me, Secret Wars is what they really want to get to, but they have this Jonathan Major size problem with Kang Dynasty that they've just been struggling to solve along the way. And we've seen that lead to they're having trouble getting someone in the director's chair. They're having trouble getting a story that they want. Jonathan Majors hasn't disappeared, continue. <laughs> so Avengers 5, we have three things. Number one, Sean Levy, your director of Deadpool and Wolverine, which is obviously tracking toward a $200 million plus US Open and a massive um, you know, box office show uh, at the end of July, is now being linked as the possible director for Avengers 5, a seat that Destin Cretton held following Shang-Chi, but had recently vacated. So that's mm -hmm. what we got. We got an in-house guy who's going to be riding high probably in about a month's time who they are, I guess, comfortable working with. Uh, and then you can start your little conspiracy theories to your point, since he just got done directing Ryan and Hugh and sort of a multiversal TVA blow it up type story with Deadpool and Wolverine. How might that link to what Marvel might want to do in Avengers? So that's number one. Number two is Benedict Cumberbatch. Dr. Strange himself dropped a quote saying he was very much looking forward to, oh, here's the full quote. Um, quote, it's been a pretty lovely relationship with that company, meaning Marvel and Disney. I'm very much looking forward to Avengers next year. It's cooking up a storm, end quote. Mm -hmm. So that's been linked to they're looking to shoot early in 2025 to make that 2026 release date. And then the last thing was kind of a lot of uncertainty around villains, but two main things that stood out that Kang would be in the movie in some form, but in a greatly reduced capacity. And that Doom can I, would can not I, can, I, can be, I say it? Yeah, sure. Mayor Humdinger, continue. And Doom? <laughs> Doom would not be the successor, the direct successor, but rather is being reported to be similar, being introduced and used similar to how Loki has been used over the course of the prior iteration of the MCU. So appearances here and there culminating in maybe his grand villain turn. So that still leaves, well, what's in between, right? Because that doesn't really fill the void. So that's where we're at. That's like the summary statement. Let's dive in. Doom, this approach towards Doom, I get it. I understand it, Brian. One of, I, and I've mentioned this before, there is, if you go to YouTube and you see, I think on Comics Explained, he goes over a, 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 a mini series of Doom doing an interview with a reporter and him sort of explaining his life. Brian, this is not an easy life, Brian, from his perspective. And that's the point right there, Brian. And, and, and the way that series ends, Brian, is just brilliant. 
you got I, I gotta send you the link. I don't know if you've watched it, Brian, but when you I don't know if you dropped the work. I don't, what when whenever you get a chance, I'll watch it so you can see what I'm talking about and the approach that they should take, Brian. Because Doom, although he does atrocities, he is loved by his people because he protects them, correct? Mm-hmm. And he's and he has moments where he is the stuff that he says, the things that are said about him is like I think it was uh Reed Richards said Doom is perhaps one of the most dangerous he said he holds Doom in such high regard in terms of a threat, Brian. The most intelligent man on earth is worried. That says a lot. So it'll be interesting how they take that approach of introducing Doom. Because although we know Doom, we have to feel something about this Doom. We know who Doom is. We have a feeling, uh, 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 I guess, a connection to Doom in, 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 in the stuff that we've read in the comic books and stuff like that. That has to continue on with this version of Doom. Well, I think one thing... So first off... I. You know, I think they're barking up the right tree, which is I think it would be a huge mistake to just go right from Kang to Doom. We've talked about this. I don't think the Avengers franchise is ready for that. I think it would be a, a waste of a performance to just launch right into him. So the fact that if it is a Loki-esque type of sprinkling before we get to the main event, great. That, that probably is closer to what could make sense. I think whoever steps into that role is not going to be shackled by past iterations. I mean, Julian McMahon and Toby Kebbell, I, I, I think a hundred fans on the street, probably half of them wouldn't even be able to name both actors who portrayed Doom in the prior iterations, you know, on-screen adaptations of, of Fantastic Four. So it's not like a Joker, right? It's not like you're living up to the legacy of, of Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. Like there's blank space here to make this all-time character into something over a long period of time. Um, but it still, to me, sounds like, as we get back to Avengers 5, there isn't really a plan yet for how to bridge this gap. And that's, you know, what it's kind of starting to remind me of is like, it's kind of reminded me of like, you remember what like USA basketball got to where it's like in the late 90s and early aughts where like they couldn't get, they couldn't get the top players to play for the yeah. US yeah. and it's like you, you that's how we wind up going to Athens and getting smoked you know because we basically had like Tim Duncan Alice and Allen Iverson and, and like high school kids right we had like LeBron at 18 Melo at 18 you know Stefan Marbury Jack and shot like but all the actual all-stars were sitting at home that's what it feels like Avengers 5 has is is and it feels that way both on the villain side and the hero side it's like the roster we really want <laughs> is out there but we can't sign them and we can't get them in, into this film yet. And so we're left with this sort of like B squad of, of who's going to make this an event, a sort of pseudo Avengers movie. I've been thinking about how do you work? I mean, you know my thing about scrapping the whole thing. But then I was like, what about, what about going from two movies to just one? What, about we, what if we just did one? Let's not even worry about Secret Wars yet because they're not ready for it. No, so like, why, don't we, why don't we have like an interim Avengers story, almost like a build them up Avengers story? that isn't reliant on just getting to Secret Wars. Exactly. That's what I was just thinking about, Brian. There's nothing that you've done thus far that can introduce a compelling story for Secret Wars. Nothing. No, and the guy that they were pinning it on is the one they dropped in Majors, right? He was supposed to be the backbone of this enterprise, and it's not going to be him. So it was an interesting call, Brian. Who would have who who wouldn't have made that that move? If I'm in the room and I'm seeing Major's performance and I'm like, yo, this guy. But love and hip hop happens and then we go, <laughs> you know. So, but if they're trying to shoot this early next year, my concerns all remain intact. Feels, I mean, we're, that would put us, what, maybe eight, nine months away from being in front of the camera. They don't have the director formally signed. We don't have the villain problem sorted. I don't know. I mean, it still <laughs> feels very tenuous that this could be a, 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 you know, Joss Whedon Justice League sized debacle if, at the rate they're going. Okay. Having said that, Brian, let's, let's look real quickly at what's coming up. We got Thunderbolts, we got 
Civil War, no. Brave, Captain Brave America, New Brave New yeah. World. Uh, <sighs> what else after that? We got this MC, this this Doctor Strange movie that everybody's been talking about for months, or not even for months. Since last year, I've been hearing rumors about Doctor Strange coming back, and they haven't done nothing. And that perhaps will be the uh, vehicle that they use to introduce Secret Wars, Brian, because that's what he deals with. But he's now said, but if Cumberbatch is now saying he's shooting Avengers 5 next, that would imply that's coming before his own. Okay. Movie. At least okay. that's the way the, he's, he and his agent are being told that's what the calendar is. That doesn't, yeah, that, ah. if this is a secret, if this is a secret uh, Wars movie, Brian, it'll be nothing like we've seen. It'll be nothing like the comic book series that we know. They did it with they kept the core of the Infinity Saga, Brian. The glove, the power stones, they really did a good job of uh, finessing that storyline. I don't know how you finesse this one because Secret Wars is a very complicated storyline, Brian. And if you Disneyfy is what I'm going to call it. You have <laughs> Mouse Gander, Brian, I'm calling it Disneyfy. It's the Disneyfication, Brian of the MCU continues. So here's my other question because of the Sean Levy name. And we're talking about this roster problem. What are the odds that Avengers 5 really kind of be winds up being like a hybrid Avengers slash Deadpool Wolverine 2? Is that a possibility? Because we know this Deadpool Wolverine is going to be a multiversal story that's going to blow some stuff up, yeah. reset some things. And if he's now directing the next one, is that not just because they like working with him, but actually has a storytelling reason to have him behind the camera to say, continue with some of the ideas that you started in Deadpool and Wolverine. That becomes the part one, call it. Avengers 5 is more like a part two, and then we get to Secret Wars, and that's actually the finale. Like, what about that as a conspiracy theory for where we're headed? And does that solve the roster? Not solve, but does that put a bandage on the roster issue somehow if we get a little more, you know, I don't know if I'd want it, but like more Hugh Jackman, more Ryan Reynolds to kind of carry the load for a weaker Avengers team. It all depends on this film, obviously, right? If what, like, Brian, if this movie is horrendous, but it makes a lot of money, I have no hope whatsoever. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. It's going to be whatever. And like I said to Tracy... Uh, and, and Freddie about this rumored Teron Egerton. I'm going to be watching this like Bed Miller from a <laughs> distance. <laughs> Still the betting favorite. Yeah. And rumored to be in the movie, right? Like rumored to be like one of the cameos in this. So. Yeah. By the way, you, in the category of cameos, do you hear that Blade cameo thing for Deadpool and Wolverine? <laughs> that was hilarious. I love it. I love it. Brian Reynolds did not Listen. like working with Wesley Snipes. <laughs> he puts in another version of Blade in this movie. You think a bag is not being offered to Wesley Snipes and he's going to say no? This is his <laughs> opportunity to come back to it. Why not, Brian? No, it's clear that Ryan Reynolds still has beef with him from 20 years ago. I mean, this is not, this is definitely like a Hey, yeah, if you can get over your beef attitude, with yeah. The Rock, you can get over your beef with Wesley. That's fair. That's fair. But... But anyway, it's still just, yeah, this, I, I just, I can't quite crack what this movie's going to be, and it doesn't sound like Marvel can either. So I don't know. This still feels, this still feels like it has disappointment written all over it till further notice. But, but I am glad if there's a silver lining, we're not rushing Doom. It doesn't sound like we're rushing Doom. So we take, we take that as a win. That, perhaps. that, that, that approach is going to be everything, right? That approach for Doom is going to be everything. And again, I'm going to send you that link and I'll probably put it in the description well, so we're you guys getting, can watch it. So the funny thing too with the Doom thing is like, you know, we just come off X-Men 97, right? We just sent, spent all this time about how well Magneto was written and depicted. And, mm -hmm. and I think he shares a lot of what you just said in the sense of, right, like inspirational, charismatic leader who his methods sometimes <laughs> go way <laughs> over the line. Right. So, but you, you, you just, you always have that respect. You don't have pure hatred for the character. Right. And then we're going to talk about, you know, the penguin, right. The trailer for the penguin, another show 
which is clearly going to be setting up a protagonist supervillain. Like, a, it's a character we're supposed to empathize and probably grudgingly root for in his own show, even as we know that ultimately he's a nemesis yeah. to Batman. So yeah. you're potentially getting these examples of how to turn mostly villainous characters into, if not heroes, at least sort of characters who make you think. And Doom might be the ultimate example of that. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully they take some cues from that. But I mean, you're, my point is you're just having other examples in the, in the genre of this being done. Mm-hmm. Um, and it potentially were, and I, and you could argue whatever you think of Joker, the movie, that's effectively what that movie did, right? I mean, to a tune of a billion dollars, like to turning an arch villain into sort of a, you know, a lead that you're supposed to kind of root for by the end of the movie. Brian, we've had many of them in the past, Brian. Oh, this one villain, Brian, is so iconic to me because he did everything he needed to do to get you to feel the way you you felt about him. Commodus. <laughs> he cannot rule. He must not rule. <laughs> that was his father, yo. And that by, performance, man, is just legendary. By the way, you've been hearing that scuttle on Gladiator 2? Nah. So we're supposed to get a trailer, like, next week or two? Okay. Everyone is saying, like, they did it. That's the word. That they pulled this off, and it looks, like, insane. That's the word. Brian, and not to go off on a tangent, I know we're talking about Secret Wars, but it's good to talk about awfulness and greatness. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear the contrast. You and I perhaps have had conversations. We never really actually talked about Gladiator Two. We all, we've, we've all saw. I mean, we've often referenced the what Gladiator was, the original, in, in, in various conversations. But we never had a full conversation about it. But Gladiator Two was perhaps a conversation. I don't know if I've had with you, but I've certainly had with others about why, right? Because to me, Brian, I would have been okay. Even though the bags would have been too crazy to to to, uh, to overlook. But to me, Matrix, to me, that first movie is just classic. It's just classic, <laughs> regardless of what happens after that. And Gladiator, to me, is a classic joint, too. <laughs> Yeah, I won an Oscar. Won multiple Oscars. Yeah, yeah. and you know, and, and it wasn't and, yeah. and it was because of the individuals in the, the performances in that in that movie, Brian. Sure. It was because of the performances in that movie. I don't know if, if you ever heard Russell Crowe describe his uh uh a scene that Ridley Scott had wanted him to do. He knew yeah. Brian what he had. And once we once we saw it. I am so glad I was in the theater seeing Gladiator Brian. I if they could if they are able to bring me back to that Brian, bravo and standing ovation at the end of that. I'll bring it back to the genre. So the thing of did it, you know, why did it need a sequel? No, it probably didn't. But that was always a story where the threat of a sequel The thread. I don't think it was deliberately written that way, but very organically was always there for them because of the sun and because of the nature of Roman history that they were following. And so the fact that they are pulling on that thread and it is the, it is the sun and they've got a guy, right? Like Paul Meskel's a guy like he, they caught him right before he turned into what looks like he's going to be a megastar. Um, what, what, what was he in before that? Well, it's not that it's not what he was in. It's just he started to get now like these mainstream roles, like kind of like almost a late blooming Chalamet. Like you're going to see him everywhere, like working for top directors. Like remember, they wanted him to be Johnny Storm. There was a rumor that they were recruiting him to do that. But this is the movie that got him um, okay. as like, the lead. And so I think that's going to pay dividends for them uh, over time. I think, Brian, I think the difference between Fantastic Four and this is that you get to work with Ridley Scott. Continue. Right. But the thing that was in the back of my mind is like, you know, is there a is there a strange little parallel to the Wakanda franchise, right? Because the sun 
is sitting there as like, what are they going to do with that in the world someday? And like, if this movie somehow pulls off the son in the next generation, kind of dealing with the fallout from the world of his father, I would argue that's a potential template for where they could ultimately take, you know, a Black Panther franchise someday and, and you know, reinstalling T'Challa or not T'Challa, but his son as the sort of the heir someday, like not now, but I'm curious to see how, how this looks. And by the way, this thing has to work because a rumored budget's over $300 million. <laughs> so, so, so it better look good. <laughs> so, so everything that you're describing, Brian, in terms of what they, they did it, <laughs> it sounds like they did it. They had that much money. <laughs> So, Godzilla minus one is all I gotta say. Three hundred million dollars, sheesh. But three hundred million, I will say this: three hundred million dollars in the hands of really Scott's one of my favorite and most fascinating directors because when he's off, he's usually really off. Like I don't mm -hmm. like his movies. Like I thought like Napoleon was pretty off, quite honestly. Uh, but I, 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 but I, I think that had to do with more of who, who, who who's in charge. <laughs> but but when Ridley's on, nobody is better than that guy. Like you look, and this is dating back. Well, to, what other movie did you didn't you like? I'm curious. Well, I'm saying like his version of Robin Hood with Russell Crowe is not nearly as good as Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Right, that's a classic yeah. example. Same lead, same style of epic filmmaking, but yeah. one movie's forgettable and one's a classic. Like yeah, that to me yeah. is really Scott. Okay, but it's like okay. you look at his highs, like Alien, you know, Blade Runner, Gladiator, The um, Martian, Thelma and Louise. Martian. The Martian. Yeah. Like when he Love hits it, movie. it goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Has he won an Oscar before? I don't believe so, actually. That's he, crazy to I me, know, yo. Right? I know, right? I, I don't know. believe it. He did not win for Gladiator, I'm pretty sure. Because Russell Crowe won and the movie won, but he did not win. I know we're off on a tangent here yeah, but, yeah, with yeah. the Doom and, and sort of Wakanda stuff. But yeah, I just, uh, that's on the sort of tangent well, Brian, of the sort genre. Of you know? that the, the, yeah. that these characters require especially do especially do this is the sort of performances leading man like brian engine the engine show shogun that dude oh cosmo jarvis <laughs> you heard it here first on the nerd report he has some of the most hilarious lines in TV in that show when he starts cursing at the people. It's so, if you haven't seen that show, he has like one episode where he name calls one of the other characters and just start cracking up with his accent. It's so good. But that is the sort of performance a Doom requires. He might and... be the sort of actor that's a good idea too because he's not... You don't know him as Cosmo Jar. I think Doom, you might struggle, honestly, if you got an actor who was so famous that you like can't unsee the actor. Exactly. And you can just, uh, yeah, 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 man. The possibilities, man, for Doom, they have to get it right. They have to get it right. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Secret Wars and what their plans are for this movie in terms of how they get us to get up for this. Yeah. Because right now is like, do you really care what they have coming up or how? Because you're not going to see Tony Stark. Maybe. Brian, if they were able to pull that off, life model decoy would only be the reason why they would do it, Brian. It's the only thing that makes sense. He's the one, the first dude to say it. If I'm not, if, let me know in the comment section below if I'm incorrect, that he was the first guy in the MCU to say life model <laughs> decoy. Yeah, he was, because he says it into the phone to Coulson, right? Because he doesn't want Coulson to come in the apartment exactly, when he says Brian. it. That's when he says it. And it would be ironic because he's, I believe he said this line at the end of Incredible Hulk. But if he's in the credit show, if he's in the credit stinger somehow saying we're putting the team back together, you would have watched two and a half hours of your life and people probably would lose their minds. You probably would get the screaming moment in the theater if that happened. <sighs> that, yeah, that would be a, uh, how would I say, goosebump moment. Or would that be a, because you commented on your t-shirt, would that be a, Peach of a hand. 
<laughs> Shouts to Val Kilmer's Doc Holiday, one of the greatest we'll characters ever. Put it in ever. there. Put it in there. <laughs> but um, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of, of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report.